Hey guys, the adventure begins going to Halloween, Cuba. Just got all the paperwork. You can buy the tourist car right here at Fort Lauderdale. Fill out this declaration why you're going person to person tour. Join me on the adventure, guys. Here we go. I think this is it, guys. Landfall over Cuba. Just past 10,000 feet. Coming in for the final approach to land in Holguin, as you can see. A lot of farmland. It looks really lush down there. Farmland with some little ponds and lakes mixed in. Just a lot of vast open space. Here we are guys, Holguin Airport. Touchdown. We got a round of applause. Always love a landing with a round of applause. And there it is. Wow, I like that. Looks like a tropical style with the roof and an American Airlines plane. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Blue Airways welcome to the Cuba. Please stay seated with the seatbelts fastened and back Cuba, don't you know to the city? gate. The captain has turned off the fastened seatbelt sign. Also, please be careful when opening overhead lenses. Items have a tendency to shift during flight. Again, please make sure the customs and forms are filled out. If you still need forms or pens to fill those out, there will be pens made available to you in the customs building. We need to thank everyone for flying with us this afternoon. Everyone have a great day, and again, thanks for choosing JetBlue. You're welcome. Only because you were the cheapest. Damas y caballeros, JetBlue, bienvenida a Holguín, Cuba. Para su seguridad, por favor, mantenga su cinturón abrochado, equipaje de mano guardado, hasta que el capitán apague la señal de los cinturones. Tenga cuidado de abrir los compartimientos superiores, ya que los objetos suelen moverse durante el vuelo. Y si tiene un recibo que dice que no hay puede recoger su equipaje al salir del avión. Los pasajeros que necesitan ayuda para desembarcar pueden permanecer sentados después que lleguemos y así podremos atenderlos mejor. En nombre de todos nosotros aquí en JetBlue, especialmente esta tripulación con base en Fort Lauderdale, les damos las gracias por volar con nosotros hoy. Nuevamente, Frank bienvenido Hines, a Holguín Airport. Yeah, it looks like a pretty modern airport. It's only a city of 400,000, so it's a very good size airport for not a huge city, a provincial city. Can't tell if we get a jet bridge or if we're going to have to walk uh, into the airport down the stairs, but we'll see. Get right back to you when I clear customs, get my bag.
pretty sweet ride, guys. Here it is. It looks like an old Chevy and um, still runs really well. No AC or anything, no real instrument panel, but they've done some work to it. Got a Subaru steering wheel, uh, hooked up with a CD player. This is what, a Chevrolet? Chevy? No, Ford. Oh, it's a Ford? Ford oh, yeah. okay. 455. 455. Do you know what year from the 60s? Or? The car? 1960, 19... 1955. 55? Oh, 1955. Okay, wow. Awesome, man. And it's what, automatic too, huh? Automatic transmission? No, no. Mechanical. Oh, you do it like that? Okay. Wow, man. The original, you know? Yep. Mechanical. i never seen that before. That's cool. Tough to drive, or you get used to it, right? Eh? Tough to drive, difficult to drive it with the shift, but no. not really. No. So here we are, guys, in the uh, Casa Particular that I'm renting. This is a little breakfast area outside covered by a canopy type thing. Nice gardens in the back. The houses are pretty close together, but with all this greenery around, you feel like you have a lot of privacy. The owner of this house, as you can see, it's three apartments, four doors here. He lives in one, I guess the family rents out the other three. It's a whole family business, brothers, mom, dad. I'm just gonna show you a little lay of the land. That's the main street where that blue building is. And you follow that down three blocks and he's saying that's the main square with a market, restaurants, bars. Here's the door. I'm gonna show you guys the room. I don't know how the lighting is. Here, let me just try to get the light. Okay, um, and first of all, Big bed, what do you call this, like a double bed or a queen bed? Interesting artwork, I like that. A little American influence with the car pine tree here. Nice view looking down, oh look at that. A little alley cat out there. You guys see that? Oh, a fridge, and look at this, I've never seen, what is that, rum maybe? Ron Veradago, yeah, silver rum. And then we got some water, beer in there, in the fridge. Alarm clock, lamp, air conditioner thing for your clothes. When I was on Airbnb, everybody raved about the shower. They call this like a rain water or waterfall shower. I can't remember what you call it. Get a shot of that when it's going. What did it include here? Soap. Is this made in Cuba too? Yes, it is. Nice flowers, decorations. And everybody said the water pressure was phenomenal too. So this is it guys, the Casa Particular that I'm staying in. Airbnb, it was uh, $34 a night I believe, and then there was a $10 cleaning fee. And then I think Airbnb charges their own like $10 fee. Not bad for the location, private room, private lock. I just gave them my passport because they got to pay the government a portion of their take for the Casa Particular and the form of taxes and keep track of who their guests are. So here we are guys, uh, he's going to come back, give me my passport. The plan is right now to take a nap because it was a long flight from, well, I left, went down to Fort Lauderdale and Fort Lauderdale down here and taxi into town. So here we are, guys. Okay, guys, just unwrapped the Cuban soap and we're going to check out this world-class waterfall shower. One thing I hate about checking into new hotels is you never know how to use the shower. And probably more than half the time I end up getting doused. This thing will, like, go nuts, start squirting everywhere. So I think I'm going to go... Whoa! That just happened, see? But at least... Okay, we'll turn that bad boy around. So that's not it. We want the big guy. Open this here. Oh! Jesus Christ! So I finally figured it out. I had to point that thing down. And this is going to be a very nice shower. Till later, guys. Alright, guys. Outside the Casa Particular. Now uh, walking towards the downtown. And I don't see a street sign, so I hope I don't lose my bearings. I'm just going to have to remember a yellow house. Half yellow, half blue. I'm trying to think of a, a landmark so I won't get lost here. Oh, look at this little horse-drawn carriage. Just chilling. I don't know. How am I going to remember that? A fruit stand? No, that guy's probably going to go home. Oh, right here. Okay, Los Dos Corazonas. Los Dos Corazonas. Oh, is that a store? That's a store. Let's check that out in a second. I'll have to remember that. Los Dos Corazonas. And we're getting closer to the uh, center city downtown of Holguin, Cuba. Some more examples of uh, old American cars and ladders from the Soviet Union. Old Russian truck. Soviet truck. And they kind of got it set up as a touristy place, museum, municipal museum, Calixto Garcia Park. This is the city of parks after all, another park. So we're just going to keep walking and see, see what we got. Oh, look at that lot. I painted lime green. Uh, and it's kind of probably getting killed by the light here. Oh, now I think I'm going to turn the camera off for now. Oh, look at this. It's a little bit of street art. It looks like graffiti, but I don't think this is just random graffiti. I think it's kind of like art. Art, 
of progressives, progresso. Oh, he's a young pioneer. What's up, buddy? Let's see. So once we get to that green awning, that's kind of like where it all happens. And look at the pride these people take in it in front of their house. I've seen like 20 people doing that, washing it with water and scrubbing the sidewalk. So it looks like we can go. Really got to be careful here. We got some potholes, but nothing I can't handle. And this little sign here, I don't know if you can see it, that signals kind of like a room for rent. From what I've heard, the red ones are for the locals. The blue ones are kind of geared toward international tourists. A lot of them don't have AC and they don't have, they may not have English speaking hosts. Wow, that's a cool bar. Look at that. I have to hit that place up after. This is a really old car. Jeez, that looks like it's from maybe the 40s. What's it say? Fleetmaster for the luggage rack on top. And this is, oh, sorry guys. Looks like fabric, a fabric shop. Wow, okay. So quite a bit going on. What I like about Cuba so far is since there aren't really that many cars on the road, people rely on buses, bikes, mostly their feet. So the streets are always packed. There's always a nice street scene going on. Oh, looks like they're renovating this building here. I like this color, kind of like the traditional Bermuda, Caribbean style green color. Oh, horse going by right now. And Da, 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 da. All right, sorry about this sun, guys. We got some shade coming up in just a minute. Oh, pardon me. Wow. Look at this place. That looks really fancy. Too rich for my blood, but. So this is kind of like the main square. I can't remember if this is Plaza of the Revolution or. Got some sidewalk cafes, and this kind of does remind me of like Italy, Spain, Portugal, kind of like the Club Med countries. Not only the architecture, but the lifestyle of the people, the relaxed, laid-back lifestyle. They enjoy life. Oh. And it's like this plaza is under renovation here beautiful place with the trees and everything. Got the radio or TV tower there. El Mirador cafeteria. And the other thing, the other thing that I think I can, can confirm now is so far this is pretty much the safest experience I've had in the Caribbean. Caribbean's beautiful and everything but um, a lot of those countries, once you get outside the resort, you're, you may be putting yourself in danger, but here, I don't feel that way at all. Look at this, these beautiful buildings here. Oh, this looks like a museum, old furniture. Maybe check that out at some point. And uh, you get the feeling that people here, even though the media or whatever in America may try to spin it one way. You get the feeling that people here are pretty content with their life. You don't see anybody starving. You don't see anybody begging on the streets. And this is, like I said, a provincial city. This isn't the capital. This is kind of a place that not as many tourists go. Oh, look at this. We got Fidel Castro. What's his name? The old president of Venezuela. Oh, Hugo Chavez. Fidel Castro and his brother is playing, playing baseball there in front of a Mercedes S-Class at the bottom. I like that car. So, look at these buildings. Beautiful. It almost looks like a Hollywood movie scene. So, t let me just take one more look so I don't get lost. Not be able to figure out how to get home. So, I remember that green building and then you just go up that street with the flag. So, we'll cross this crosswalk here and see what this park's all about. Oh, pardon me, guys. Sorry for the bumpiness of the camera. Nice lights. And they do this in Asia a lot, too. You see that with the umbrella. They don't want to get any sun. Whereas us Americans, we're dying to get sun. We'll even go to a tanning salon and pay for it. This is dedicated to Major General Calixo Garcia. I think he was the one 
I think I remember reading he was the one that uh, fought for Cuban independence. This isn't the revolution, this is before that. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. So I don't know if we're allowed to walk here or not, but they're, they're working with the concrete. And that's, that looks like it's a statue there, if you guys can see that. There's all their equipment. At the end of the day, I'm almost calling it quits here. All right, I'm going to end it for now, guys. Just going to keep on walking down here. If I see anything of particular interest, I'll turn the camera back on. We're getting killed with the sunlight again here, guys. I don't know if you can see that. Center of telecommunications. Big crowd out there. I don't know if they're waiting in line for cell phones, possibly, or some kind of satellite TV. One thing that I didn't expect to see, there is you see a lot of smartphones around. Everybody seems to have a smartphone, even a lot of uh, Apples, Apple iPhones. So that's one thing that shocked me so far. Out of all the things that shocked me, the number one thing is how peaceful this place is, how content the people are, how cheerful and happy the people are. The second thing is the standard of living. It's much, much higher than people in America, the average person in America thinks it is. You don't see anybody here at rock bottom. You don't see anybody homeless begging on the street like you do in America. So let's see, some more signs. La Campania. I think that's a restaurant. Oh no, it's not. It's closed actually, okay. Cafeteria Crystal. Discotheque Pico Cristal. But I still want to see that. Info tour. Alicante. So let's see. Gonna cross here, see what this other store is in the middle. Oh, Rico Pizza. Can't go wrong with pizza. This looks like La Campagna Tienda Turistica. So maybe tourist shop is what I'm saying? Is what I'm thinking? Sorry. Hello. Let's see, sometimes they don't like the camera on in here. Keep it on the DL. Tea, tea, tea. Tea. So sunglasses. Six cooks. Wine glasses. Ashtray. Uh, this is a lot of kind of like beach style stuff. Cool map of Cuba up there. A little cigar shop. Perfume. Confectionaries. Let's see if they're open. Looks like candy, drinks, chocolate, water, a lot of water. So, oh, Snickers bar. One cook, 25 pesos. So let me turn this off and see. Guys, here we are in the tobacco part of this store. This is the cigar room in here, but they also have espresso. So this is the bottom part of the espresso. She's making it right now. And then big bags of coffee. So I'm thinking I'm, I may get one of them and take it home. And I want to show you guys the cigarettes. Hollywood Gold. I want to see where those cigarettes are made. If, the, if these are like Cuban brands or I just want to see if these Hollywood ones are made in Cuba. Yeah, they are. And they even have the warning signs here. The warning signs right? Hello, she's making me coffee. Thank you. She gave me directions. She's making sure I really came here. So this is part of my person-to-person -person tour. And I'm going to have one. Wow, this is beautiful. And this is the sugar? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. And guys, I just want to show you this book of clients, book of customers, and kind of all the people that come in here and have coffee. I think I'm going to leave my name here. Gracias, Best Cafe, Daniel, Magresso, Blanco. Some really strong coffee, but the, the sugar tones it down. This is my dedication in the guest book. Amazing coffee, the best store, the most beautiful city. I love you, Halguin, Cuba's friendly city, from me. And here we are. I really have enjoyed my time here so far, even though it's the first day. Tomorrow is going to be even better, the first full day. So my plan is, like I usually do when I'm in a new place, is to wake up really, really early, take a walk, try to see the sunrise. That's when you get kind of a full sense of the city. When you see the city, wake up, people going to work. That's what I like. And it's not too hot yet. So this is a cola made in Cuba. I asked for a Coca-Cola. 
and they said this is the closest. It's called Sigo Montero. So we're going to give it a shot and see how it tastes. I like that sound. It sounds like Coca-Cola. And it tastes like 99% just like a Coca-Cola. It's really good. Hit the spot. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Thank you so much. It's just what I wanted. I've been drinking Diet Coke, but sometimes you need a little sugar. Well, actually, I'm going to have these guys sign my, my book. Here we are in a Cuban supermarket, guys. They got everything, pretty much everything you'll find in America. I see Coke here. I was wondering if Coke and Pepsi was going to be here. They have Coke and Pepsi, then they have, looks like a Mexican brand, I think I was looking at. The Mexican brand's like half price. And you're definitely paying American prices here. Let's see, Pepsi, two forty, two, two cooks. So it's like two sixty after the conversion, maybe two eighty. The Mexican one, this is eighty five cooks, so like a dollar maybe. And then the meat section over here looks like butter too, butter, beef, pork. And then the alcohol up here, alcohol, cigarettes. And what I was looking for was tea, black tea, or coffee, because I drink a lot of tea, particularly coffee once a day, but I drink a lot of tea. Havana Club, this is the real deal, made right here in Cuba. And then this is cooking oil, a lot of cooking oil, because I think they fry a lot of stuff here. Pickles, candy over here, I see ice cream, coffee mate, interestingly, coffee mate. Wow. Let's see, pasta, sardines in a can, they're probably local, sardines, yogurt it looks like, and then snacks, so this is perfect to go with tea, and I'm going to ask right now if they have So that was a cool experience at the Luz de Yara, really nice building, they don't have coffee and tea, they seem to have pretty much everything else, but my mission for today is to look for tea so I like to have a cup of tea before I go to bed and then in the morning I like to have a coffee to wake up look at that wow I like that lot of how they got it kind of propped up like that look at that all the colors that's cool let me see Pharmacia what's that uh, oh it looks like a a pharmacy Casa Litrova Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off to see what this is all about. Here we are, guys, in a air museum. And I guess this is the planes that fly into Holgan Airport. Start with Cubana Air. This is an Aleutian Russian plane, or Soviet Union-made plane. And KLM, all the European carriers. I saw Lufthansa over there. Alitalia, Olympic from Greece. I get, oh, Polish Airlines, Gulf Air. So this is probably all the the airlines that fly into Cuba as a country. I think I saw JetBlue too, the US one. Wow, look at that, Alcoholics Anonymous. They have an A meeting in Hogan, Cuba. That would surprise the shit out of me. Alcoholics Anonymous. And picture of the Pope up there, Francisco. Some more old phone booths, I like these. And oh, we're gonna be on our way here. See what we got in here. Tea bags, tea bags. Oh, see what I mean? We got candles next to sneakers. Let me see. Jeans, I see blue jeans. Jean jacket. What do they call that? Like a redneck tuxedo. Toys. I would like to get a shirt that's actually made in Cuba. I don't want it imported from like Mexico or Honduras or China or whatever. Yak shoes, 280 cook a pair? I don't know, that's pretty pricey. This looks like, I don't know if that's toothpaste or hair product. Looks like gel, no, maybe hair gel. Uh, soap, confectionaries, I like that. It's called La, La Marquesta. Okay, let's check out the next little market. 
This is perfect. It's probably about 6.30 now. The sun's going down, getting a little bit cooler. Well, this is that pizza restaurant. I don't know if you guys can see. Villa Grande. I don't know what that is. is that a, this is a club. Too bad my clubbing days are over. Oh, I like these old-fashioned phones, too. Check these out. Still in working order, too. I wonder if this is made in, probably made in the Soviet Union. But they did a good job. Look at that. We got a Hyundai, a lot, a lot of old Chevy, another lot of Peugeot. And this looks like a bedding store, maybe mattresses, sheets. Bathing suits, underwear for 35 cents, socks, more underwear, oh this is more kind of like jewelry maybe, yep, jewelry, 30 cents, look at these watches, pretty stylish, and then they got some deodorant it looks like, a belt, yeah, boots, with the old, look at that, when you go to a shoe store, they have those. Yeah. Look at that, a gardening set, tool set, hair rollers. This is a really cool shop, a little bit of everything. And look how they're just taking those mattresses and tossing them up there on the second floor. Kind of, oh. But one, another unique thing is they kind of have, all these stores, they have an assortment of things, like, I forgot to point it out at that last door. They had tourist stuff. They had like soda, magnets, whatever. Then they randomly had mayonnaise in there. Like mayonnaise and magnets and postcards. That's kind of like an odd combination. But So we're back where we started. If we take a right at this blue house, then we'll go back to the casa. But uh, I think I'm going to explore a little bit and go straight. See that old dome? That's probably one of the old churches. So here we go, another club, Club Malau. Oh, that's the one that was under renovation. I hear the salsa music coming from there. Oh, this guy's got an umbrella. He's gonna let us go. Thank you, sir. And look at this, it looks like a brand new street with marble tiles almost. Another store with liquor. This looks like kind of the main drag a lot of tourists and Europeans I can see. Uh, so I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute if I see something else kind of unique. I'll turn it back on. I don't want to waste it all with just me talking. So I'll get right back at you guys. So right outside of Revolution Square, I got a guy cutting the grass with a sickle. And check out this radio he's got in his back pocket to just keep himself entertained. His horse is over here, so he's getting food for the horse. I don't know if you can see his horse eating. And this is the sickle. Check this out. And it, I think we just asked him to use it in a second, see if he's going to do it. So here he is, going to sharpen the knife right before he gets out there with a stone. You know, he says, you see, he's a little bent because it's better to cut the... Better to cut the grass when it's bent. Yes. Wow, that's cool. So look how he does this, guys. Kind of just whacks right at the root. And it comes down in perfect formation. Wow, that's amazing. Right outside of Revolution Square here, Cuba. Here we are, guys. Revolution Square in Halguin. You can see the heroes of the revolution up there. And this is the five heroes my tour guide David was just saying. Just go around. These guys are in jail for some reason in America. I don't know what the backstory is, but um, they're heroes here in Cuba. The Cuban people haven't forgotten them, so I'm going to try to get a little bit closer and get uh, a picture up there, but there's some kind of meeting going on in front of Revolution Square, so I don't know if I want to get too close. We are, guys, they got a little museum at Revolution Square, so we got uh, Raul and Fidel and Jose Marti here, kind of a steel, a steel thing. So this is the museum 
We had to pay uh, five cooks to get in. They have tour guides, everything here. It's very nice. And this, it looks like it dates back to the 60s or the 70s. Kind of like a tribute to the revolution, the Cuban people. Mayor General Calixo Arcia Iguinez de Puebla. I don't really know what that says. Oh, 1980, Congress. One of these big Soviet-style projects. And this is just it's kind of breathtaking. It's yeah, got these guys over here actually using a, a sickle to cut the grass. That was pretty cool here. But this guy wasn't. He was out there. Let's see if they're doing it. But uh, you can see the pride of keeping this place looking good. And just standing on the other side of Revolution Square. Nice little detail here with the sword. I don't know if you guys can see that. And it looks like this is what? Jose Marti, a quote on one side and a quote by Fidel Castro on the other side. And what does this say? El Pueblo, Les Armas, Les Cunas. Just give you guys a little demonstration of the sword. It opens and closes like this. That's one cool entryway. And here in Revolution Square, I got some photos from the Cuban Revolution, also some newspaper clippings from when it happened, and old picture of Raul Castro, I guess during the revolution when he was, uh, I guess it looks like a military general, and right here, pictures of military, I guess, celebrations, another picture of Raul Castro giving a speech right here, and we were just standing. And this is from 1980, Revolution Square, I think, when they just built this building, when it was brand new. Here, Hogging. Oh, so this is the dedication for when they built this for Revolution Square, right? For 1980. Outside of a billboard here, Ernesto Che Guevara and Hugo Chavez. Uh, Hugo Chavez Frias. Hugo Chavez Frias, uh, former president of Venezuela, um, still keeping his memory alive here. The people that died for us, they died for a reason, basically it says, what the uh, tour guide says, they died for a purpose. And um, you can see around here, one thing I like about Cuba, you don't see billboards of like Coca-Cola, corporate style billboards everywhere. You got stuff like this, inspirational stuff. Here we are in front of a statue of Antonio Maceo, another hero of the revolution. And this statue is unique because the local Cubans say it looks like he's holding that knife, getting ready to chop down that tree. And it really does look like that too. And what a, what a statue. Kind of go around. And it's right in the middle of a park, kind of in a residential area. People just kind of hanging out, relaxing walking by going about their daily business it's about what 11 in the morning so i guess people on their lunch hour these guys i guess they're in charge of taking care of the park i just saw them replacing some light bulbs Here we are hugging Cuba outside Vladimir Lenin Hospital. And you can see with the colors, they make it cheerful. I like that. Nice pastel colors. And they got a bust of Lenin right outside. And just gonna go up to the main sign on the outside. It, um, it just shows kind of like a directory. Uh, Hospital in general, University General, Salon Lenin, I guess medication, laboratory. And we got all the cars parked outside. I saw some doctors and nurses walking in there. White uh, uniforms out here. So I don't know if they'll let us in, maybe into the, the bottom of it. So I see an ambulance up there. Maybe that's like the emergency room, if they have an emergency room, I don't know.
Hospitalitaria. I don't know, I wish I spoke Spanish. Let's see, we'll get a little bit closer. See a Cuban ambulance up there. This says, Information Hospital. And wow, that's cool, look at that. We got a, a painting of Lenin with Moscow in the background, the onion domes. This looks like the waiting area. Information of the hospital. And this looks like... See Pope Francis up there? All the records of the hospital. Now I think they're only going to let us in this part. Here we are guys outside a national monument, Holguin. This is the oldest house in Holguin. It's uh, actually made of mud and you can see it the kind of top layer of uh, stucco or concrete or whatever is peeling off and that's the mud underneath. That's what it's made out of. And it's still standing after all these years so did a good job. Got the Cuban flag out there. And it hopped right through that fence. Look at that, guys. Fit through somehow. Wow. And the tile and concrete roof, kind of like what you'd see in, uh, I don't know, Portugal, Spain, even Eastern Europe. You see it a lot, but mostly the warmer climates keep it nice and cool on the inside. Nice gardens out here. The gardens are beautiful. And we're going to walk in. Hola, buenos dias. Holguin Center Historico. Historical Center. Some nice details too. And inside the oldest house in Halguin, I think we got the patron saint of Halguin and the coat of arms for the city. They just told us that this is more than 200 years old with the mud walls. Original roof, the roof is in great shape, no leaks or anything. It's kind of low passageway. And wow, almost looks like a Jewish menorah. I don't know if it is or not. Let's see if it's got names. These guys, maybe the original inhabitants. Kind of showing some of the materials they worked with. Here, here is a picture when there was not a city made. Wow, this is before the whole city was built around it. This was kind of like one house in the middle of a farm. And this is, this date says 1752. Old city map. And as you can see, it's a couple blocks here, but mostly just farm. Hola. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hola. At the bottom of the hill of the cross here, 460, it's 460, right? 460 steps to the top. And already, just at the bottom, got a nice view of the city. Old fashioned cannonball here. Alguin, Cuba, city of parks. And here they all are. They. Well, not all of them, but some of them, they go uh, kind of a straight line up to the theater. It's kind of that uh, yellow building all the way up, and you can see a Ferris wheel a little bit up ahead. I don't know if you guys can see that with the tape, but beautiful view. Um, just up maybe a quarter of the way, and uh, the air is already a little bit cooler. His name Antonio Maceo. Antonio Maceo Street. Yes. Hero of the Revolution. City of Parks, Halguin. Oh, okay. You see over 
over there, there is a, a zoo. Yep. Uh, San Jose Church. It's not a Catholic church? No, no, no. Oh. We're gonna now the Catholic Road. Palito Arcia Park. Oh, I remember this park. Under construction. And this is this is the theater, right? Is that the theater? Yes, this is the main park. The main square is this Palito Arcia. Main square, Palito Arcia. Calito Arcia Park, guys, the best square in Hagin. And here he is with his sword, Hero of the Revolution. And this park is under renovation. Look how they're doing that with the uh, flattening the concrete and everything. Gonna redo all the benches, the whole nine yards. Gonna be a beautiful spot. Already is, but really impressive how they're doing this, the machinery and everything. And this square, this is where you get uh, Wi-Fi, where Cubans come to get Wi-Fi. There he is, Jose Marti, hero of the revolution. And Glorieta Albanese, some, I don't know what that is, a little monument type thing. Right outside of the courtyard. And midday, this, this park is absolutely packed, this is the place to be. And one interesting thing too is, I don't know where they were, oh, right there. These long lines are for the ice cream parlors. That's what my tour guide was saying there. You can still get ice cream, but those are the two cheapest ones. And there are lines literally around the block to get ice cream. Pope John Paul visited this cathedral, I think in 1998. Let's see if we can get a better shot of this. guys outside of the train station in Halguin, Cuba. Little information booth at the bottom and a platform up there. This is the station. I don't know if you need a ticket or anything to get in. I'm gonna find out right now. But very nice station. Sort of colonial design. See it looked like a freight train going up there. I saw one engine and one car. Got a pack station, so I think they're expecting a train to show up at any minute. Just see if we're allowed in here or if we need a ticket. Oh. Like an open air station, and we got a guard here, this lady in white, and this guy here, and I guess they open up the gate when it's time for boarding. There it comes, guys. Train coming into Holguin, Cuba. It's like an old diesel. That is amazing. Looks like they got the freight cars in front. Passenger cars in back. A little mix of everything. And I don't see any conductors yet. Looks like the doors just open by themselves. Just 
people got a lot of luggage, bikes, and they're doing it very orderly fashion. So they're not going to open these doors to let the people out until all the people have completely gotten off the train. And let's see if they have a conductor who is... I don't know if they actually have a conductor, if they just have the guys at the station who close it up until the next stop. And there's nobody actually going through collecting tickets on the train. More like a... How American, like subway style, maybe. Uh, we'll have to see though. So, looks like a couple of people, the last couple of people getting off. Now, I don't know if they're gonna change ends here, if there's um, a diesel on the other end too, and go backwards, or if they're gonna keep on going in the same direction. We'll have to find out. So this guy, he's checking something in the bottom, maybe checking the air, making sure there's no leaks. And now he's gonna open the gate. He's probably, maybe he's got everybody's name in there. We'll have to see. Just unhitch this diesel from the train. It looks like they might be going around to put it on the other direction. And we got the engine coming around on the other direction. I see the cleaners going through there, sweeping it out. And they're going to hitch it on the other side. There he goes, easy as that. The international language of railroading. Pretty much the same thing wherever you go. On there, sweeping it out, doing a great job. Up there, looks like they're getting ready to make the hitch. And we'll probably see a little bump along the train when they actually do tie in. Or maybe they're just that smooth, that precise. Oh, thought I heard something. Maybe not, though. And they're still on there, mopping it. And I think um, somebody was saying the newer cars are Chinese. I'm not sure which country these were actually manufactured in. And it looks like um, a few different styles. Like this looks, looks, oh yeah, it looks like they did tie in. Now they're, they're connecting the air. And usually what they do is do a brake test to make sure the air is actually going through from the engine all the way to the tail end. I don't know if he's gonna be able to do that or not. Usually they have somebody back there checking it. Yep, there it is. So they made the hitch. I'm trying to see if I can see the pistons on here. Oh, so they're backing it up. Maybe they only use, since everybody, it seems like everybody got off that last stop, maybe they're gonna just use, start off with a couple of cars in the front and kind of work their way back. And there are more stops. Ferrocelius de Cuba. Look at those. That is, and I see ships painted on the side. Usually, that could mean that it's like intermodal. They can put them on a ship, right to the railroad, and then right to the truck. Usually. Oh yeah. That is a beast. I'm not good with ages or anything, but that could be a good, in the 60s maybe, 50s. And they're backing that way up, so I guess they're not gonna let the people get on yet, or maybe they have to refuel or something like that. Here they are, hugging Cuba. Pulling it up to let passengers on, it looks like. So they're gonna get all the cars on the platform. They did their inspection. The security guards walked through, checked the entire thing. They had cleaners go on there. Um, change engines, change engines on the 
on the train. So I guess this is the end of the line for this particular train. Looks like we got one, two, three, three cars. Oh, they took a car off. That's what they did. They took a couple cars off. And I guess they got a yard back there. So I'm down there lining the tracks. Now they're going to come back in the other direction. Now what's he going to do here? Looks like he's throwing the iron again because there's another track over there. Amazing how quick they can do this. So they're bringing the engine back. I don't know if they're going to bring another engine to tow these cars. They got some new cars over there. They changed the rolling stock. It looks like they got some sort of a yard back there. Maybe they're doing maintenance work on some of them and bringing out fresh equipment. So they just stopped here. I'm not sure what they're doing. I think they got more tracks up there. Maybe they got to switch the iron again to go in another direction. Oh, I think I just saw them take the air out, so maybe that blue one, they're going to leave that there. I don't know. My guess is they're going to just back up now. Maybe that car with the kind of like the rounded top, maybe that's like first class or business class, and this is like coach back here. So basically they just reversed everything. Maybe that blue one, kind of like the... It looks like a box car. Maybe that's like the the cheapest seats. Yep. So they just, they're throwing the iron again, and they're going to bring it back and tie it right onto this this uh, blue and yellow one, eighty one ninety five. This guy's right in position. He's see if he gives like hand motions to the engineer. Oh, he's got a radio. So see if they do it the same way. Like one car length, half a car, twenty feet, ten feet on the pin. Uh, or maybe there's somebody. So he's probably going to come to the end, or maybe this guy here is going to do it. And then he's going to put the air pipe in, or the brake pipe. Now they just grabbed another car, tied onto the front of this, and now they're going to back this up to this one here, 8195. And then it looks like the consist is complete and ready to, to take passengers and head out. So they did all this probably in a span of... 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, working like clockwork. Now, there he is with the hand motions, telling the engineer to take it back. And there he is like 20 feet, 10 feet, see if they have to do a safety stop here. Oh, yeah, look at this, beautiful. Very nice. And then stretch it out. And now, hook up the air. There he is in there. Got to connect the brake, brake pipe from one end to the other. I got it. See what he's doing there. Not yet. Oh. Okay, there it is. And now he's going to connect the air, I think. And we'll be able to hear it. Yep. Yep. And you can hear that air now from the engine going all the way through to the end of the train. Looks like now they should be ready to accept passengers. There they go, guys. Here's Mad Stampede to get on the train. Another thing that's. Uh... Let's see, I'm trying to tell. They do all have assigned seats. Everybody has an individual ticket. Sorry, bro. And making the announcements now. Doesn't look like they're checking the tickets at the door. Looks like you can just get on, and that's it. Now that the train's ready for boarding, you let me go out here. Actually, not taking that long. Veracilius to Cuba. Let's see if I can actually just get a little shot of what it's. It's just like benches, kind of. 
bad. That's all you need. And then I think, like I said before, that rounded car is maybe like first class or business class. And it couldn't, there was a little bit of a language barrier, but he did say it's going to be a long train ride, so I'm guessing hours. Everybody's got quite a bit of luggage. These seats. Yeah, it's, looks like, oh, maybe this car is, yeah, this looks a little bit better. The seats are padded. So this is kick it up a notch here. Then we got the engine up there. I mean, there are worse places to be for a long train ride. We can go in? How long we got? A minute? Or? Yeah. All right, we're gonna go in. They got a bathroom at one end. Uh, conductor, auxiliary conductor. Oh, maybe it says the conductor sits here. Hi, Mandarina. Oh, hard. Hold on. <clears throat> and this is the bathroom, the ladies' room. Going in between the cars. Same thing, bathroom at the other end. Car number. Okay. And this is, looks like another class with wooden benches, probably like the, the cheap seats back here. Pretty nice too though. I wonder if every conductor or every car has a conductor. Dolce Crema, it's a creamery right in Center City Holguin. Not that busy here because it's late at night. They got a takeout window in front. Not seeing a lot of activity, but anyway, to show you guys the menu really quickly. Uh, Sunday Primavera, that's what I ordered. One coupe, so it's like $1.50, $1.60, something like that. Ice cream shake for $1, and then uh, Alec Queen, regular Sunday, and then Suero. And then they got a little kind of plastic model to show you what it looks like. Very nice. Show you guys this from the outside, but there's a lot of these. And I don't know if you saw it in one of the previous videos, they have two of them in town that are like dirt cheap. And there were lines literally around the block. And I guess these are the more expensive ones. Oh wow, I just noticed that they got Red Bull up there for 260. That's actually not a bad price. So she's in there making it now, kind of in the back office. And you can see the sign there, Dolce Crema. So we'll see how it looks when it comes out. Hey guys, the finished product, vanilla ice cream with fruit cookie on top yeah. and I dip the cookie right in there mmm that was excellent kind of like an Oreo with holes on top mmm as you can imagine ice cream is very popular here especially in the summer when it's really hot Guys, I'm at a diner called La Bamba right now. La Bamba Diner. This is more of a local's place here in Holguin, Cuba. They just put my two patties on the stove right there. We got some Cuban music blaring. Jenny, the best waitress in the world. And um, got a cola here. And just gonna wait for it to cook. Check this out, guys. Putting the lettuce, the bun, fresh made bread, I can tell. Look at this cheeseburger, guys. This is unbelievable. Yummy. Fresh pickles, lettuce.
Just wanted to show you guys the scene outside Calixo Arcia Stadium, uh, where the, the Hall Game baseball team plays. It's morning, about 8.30 in the morning. We got kind of like a yoga dance off going on over here. Uh oh, this guy's bad news coming up to me. Um, stadium, I don't think it's open now, but I think I saw somebody going in that back door, so I'm gonna check it out, see if I can get the inside view. But uh, tour guy yesterday was saying this is the biggest stadium in, Q I don't know if he meant the biggest or the best, or but saying something like that. But anyway, it's pretty impressive. So, morning walks are always my favorite. You can see the bus station kind of right next door. It looks like, they look like trucks, but they're actually buses, I think, going to provinces or smaller cities or kind of like the farm areas. So, we're going to head over. I'll be right back with you guys. A little side view of the stadium, just walking around. Um, I see cleaners and people in there, but all the, the gates seem to be shut. Maybe they're prepping for an afternoon game today. Just walking around the side, gate 13. Definitely a pretty big place, and the lights go way, way up. So, a lot of night games being played here. As I'm showing you these blue spots of paint that have dripped from uh, the roof when they were painting this place kind of all over the pavement. And it's another thing I like about Cuba. They're not perfectionists here. It just has to work. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it does work. This, this stadium, you can tell it's dated, but it does a job. If this was America, they'd be the stadium owners. Generally, they ask for hundreds of millions of dollars from uh, the state and the city where they're located, or they threaten to move. And for me, somebody who's not really a sports fan, obviously I'm against that because it's like tax dollars for people that don't like sports going into the fan for sports. Oh, look at this. You can kind of see in. I don't know if you guys can see through those bars there. I can see some uniforms, trophies, probably from when they've won in the past. Fidel Castro here watching the game, a poster of him in there. And wow, they're really going crazy with that uh, with that dance class, morning dance class. Nothing like a morning dance class to wake you up. And as you can see, I've been walking around here, well, pretty much my whole trip, I've just been walking around, kind of like being my own tour guide, asking people for help, and everybody has been so nice, so kind. Never once during this whole trip have I felt like I was in danger or threatened or whatever. Um, not really that many places in South America, Central America, the Caribbean, where you can just walk around like this, that's for sure. Even in America, for that matter. In America, there are a lot of places you can't do this. But this whole city, I've walked this city pretty much end to end and felt comfortable the entire time. A little view inside the stadium here, and interesting, interestingly, they got a garden on the outside. Looks like they're growing lettuce or something like that. And all on the outside of the stadium, they have little cafes, restaurant type things uh, that are open already, serving coffee, uh, yogurt, little pastries. And I can see they have big signs of some of their stars. Luis Miguel Rodriguez, uh, Fernanda Lafia. That's all I can see about. Man, looks like a great place. Hopefully next time I visit, uh, there'll be a game going on. I remember my tour guide saying yesterday that I think this green building is the tallest building in Hawaii, and it's residential. Um, you can see people drying their clothes out the window, and it has an H kind of with a cross. I don't know if that means anything. Maybe it's like hospital employees that live there. Um, or maybe that's just coincidence that we see a lot of nurses and doctors walking by right now. But... Um, look like they're pretty sought after places to live in. I know in the Soviet Union in general places like this were the most sought after uh, to live in in the country because they're kind of up-to-date, modern, and they still look really nice, well kept here. So next thing is we're going to head back to the Casa. Breakfast should be ready at 9.15, so I want to try to get either a, po oh, a pony taxi. Let's see if this guy can take me. Hold on. My plan was to get one of these horse-drawn taxis, but they seem like communal taxis, kind of like on set routes. 
and they're not going to change their route just for me to go around going. See, they kind of pick up a lot of random people at the same time. See, yeah, he's these guys are waiting. He's probably going on a certain route, and let's see. Yeah, I guess they, they don't have any that are like on demand. So we're going to go back up to the main road and hopefully grab if it's not a horse taxi, I want to get one of those bike taxis or a motorcycle taxi with a sidecar. I don't want to get a car. Or maybe I, maybe I can get an old lot. I, I'd like to do that too. But we'll see. Por aquí. Close by, right? Let's see. Uh, oh, I think, uh, can you go one more block? One more. Es setenta y cinco. I think it was one more block up. Uh, Revolution C. Yeah, it's uh, one more. Yep, and it's up right here. <laughs> See. See. Mm -hmm. Breakfast time in Hagin, Cuba. And guys, just dinner time here. I'm at a restaurant called 
no doy, N-O-I-D-U-E. People staying next door to me at the Casa Particular, they recommended it. They said uh, for nine coops, you got full meal, drink, salad, uh, main course, dessert, the whole nine yards. So I'm going to give it a shot. It took me a while to find it. It's kind of like upstairs in a residential apartment. As you can see, it's really small. I think they, the owners live probably in the other half of this, and they converted this part into a dining room, but it's really nice. They got uh, antipasto, salad, uh, pasta, pizza. So I think I'm going to go with a pasta, pasta and a pizza. And I got the old uh, Cuban version of Coca-Cola, so we'll see how it looks. Thanks, guys. Here we go, guys. A little bit of bruschetta, the first part of the meal here. With some Cuban music videos going on in the background. Mm. Oh, yeah. That shit is good. And we got the second portion of the meal. Pasta bolognese or whatever. Uh, spaghetti bolognese. I think it's just like beef meat sauce with spaghetti and... This is, see those little trap doors? I don't know if you can see them in the kitchen. They just slide the food out there. She's going in now to get the Parmesan cheese to sprinkle on this pig, and then I'm going to eat it. Check this out, guys. Wasn't expecting to see this little craft Parmesan cheese. Probably straight from America. I like a lot of cheese, so I always open it like that. Douse it. Uh, oh, there we go. And here we are with the pizza margarita, guys. Just had to reinforce the stereotype of the fat American tourist. So once I finish the pasta, gonna see if I can finish that. A little bit of coffee to finish off the meal, but my favorite part is the cup. I don't know if you guys can see that right here. It says Cafe de Cuba, and the brand here is Cubita. So we're gonna give it a shot. She already mixed in the milk. Mm. That's very good, damn. That is some strong shit, but that is good.